In this video, I'll show you how to use Python to download historical price of cryptocurrencies. So most of the websites I came across require either a paid subscription or a fee to download the historical data for cryptocurrencies. But fortunately, Yahoo offers the data for free. So on Yahoo's website, you want to uh, go to this web address, finance.yahoo.com slash cryptocurrencies. All right, so here we have a list of uh, currencies on the first page. If we look at the uh, total currencies that are available, we have about 10,067 cryptocurrencies. All right, so you want to go to the detailed page of the uh, cryptocurrencies that you want to download the data from. And I'm going to use Bitcoin for uh, this demonstration. All right, so from the uh, detailed page or the summary page, want to click on historical data tab. And on the top we have several parameters. I should just tweet on uh, not several. We can set the date range and the frequencies. So either by daily, weekly, or monthly. And here we can also set the, oh, so this is going to be the, uh, the time range. So we can uh, download data by either uh, specifying the date range or can use the pre-built queries, such as the last day, the last five days, three months, six months, and so on. All right, so for this demonstration, uh, let's see. So for this demonstration, let's take a look. So for uh, cryptocurrencies, you don't have other things such as dividends, uh, stock splits, or capital gains. Anyway, uh, let's open a blank Python script. For this Python program, I'm going to import the uh, time module. And I want to export the uh, data set into a JSON file as well as a CSV file. And to do that, I'm going to import the JSON module. And to export the data set to a CSV file or even to an Excel file, I'm going to use pandas module for that. I'm actually going to import one more library from daytime. I'm going to import the daytime class. And let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so if we look at the uh, parameters, so I want to set the frequency to weekly. And for the time range, let's do uh, last six months. And click on apply. All right, so if we look at the URL string, so basically everything after this question mark is going to be the uh, parameters that we can uh, specify in our query. So here we have period one, period two, and period one is going to be the from date, and period two is going to be the to date. And here we have interval, filter type, and frequencies. And this piece is not important, so I can delete that. And interval and frequency are kind of redundant since they serve the same purpose. All right, so here I'm going to uh, create a function. And this function is going to construct the query string that we're going to pass to download the data set. And I'll call the function construct download URL. All right, so inside the function, we're going to provide the uh, ticker symbol, period one, period two, and interval. So just these four things that we need. And I'll set the interval uh, default to monthly. So when a user pass the parameter values to period one and period two, we're going to let the users to uh, provide the uh, date string directly. And the format is going to be here. So period one and period two. I'm going to make the uh, dates format to year, dash, months. But if we look at the uh, query string or the query value in the URL, the period value is actually in uh, seconds. And we'll take care of that later. And for the interval, the interval value can be daily, weekly, and monthly. 
Now to convert the uh, dates string into the uh, second value that the, uh, the API requires. I'm actually going to create another function inside the function. And I'll call the function convert to seconds. And it's going to take pairs value as the argument value. And to convert the uh, date string, we want to uh, use the daytime class that stripe time. And we set the value followed by the uh, dates format pattern. And I'll name the output as date time value. Then want to convert the uh, date time value to total seconds. And we can do that by using the time module, the MK time. And here we insert the date time value object, the time tuple. And to make sure that the value returns as an integer, so I'm going to I use the in function to just do a double conversion. And I guess uh, the time zone that the Yahoo API uses uh, is based on GMT time. I want to increase the seconds total by 86,400. Then we'll turn the total seconds value. Now I can make the API code to retrieve the historical data. So here I'm going to insert try accept block. For the exception, I'm going to print the error message. Then I'm going to exile the function. Now inside the try block, I want to convert the uh, interval argument value to the parameter value that the API accepts. All right, so if we look at the uh, interval parameter from the URL, I know it's set to uh, one week. So I'm going to create a dictionary to convert the interval argument to the correct parameter value. So we have daily and the uh, parameter value is going to be 1D and for weekly, this is going to be 1WK and for monthly, this is going to be one mo, and I'll name the object interval reference. I want to grab the converter uh, interval parameter value, and I'll name this as underscore interval. This equals to interval reference, giving the dictionary key, and it's going to be coming from the interval argument. So if the underscore interval value is none, then we know the user probably uh, insert the incorrect interval uh, value. Then we want to print a message, interval code is incorrect. And it's out of the function. Oh, so here I forgot the if statement. Otherwise, I want to go ahead and make the API call. So first I need to convert the pairs into uh, total seconds. And it's going to be pair one and pair two. And for the URL, here let me just grab this URL. And I'll make this as F string. All right, so Actually, uh, let's do this. I'm actually going to grab the download link. All right, so if you haven't noticed, on top of this uh, historical data table, we have this uh, download link. If we click on the link, it's going to prompt us to download a CSV file. And the concept is we're going to uh, load the CSV file into a data frame object. So I'm going to copy the link and I'll paste the link to my script. And it's going to be the API endpoint. All right, so this is going to be the ticker. And it's going to be P1. 
and P2. And here we have the uh, interval. And we don't need the other parameters. However, I like to include one more parameter, which is not showing in the URL. And it's going to be filter. It goes to history. Then we to turn the URL. Now we're done with the function. And we can make the API code to download the historical data from Yahoo Finance. All right, so here I'm going to create my uh, query URL. And I'll insert the construct download URL function. And for the ticker, it's going to be BTC dash USD. Now I still want to get the historical data from uh, year 2021, January 1st to let's do 2021st to January 15. Now I want to get the daily data, and it's going to be daily. So we know this URL is going to return the uh, link to download the CSV file. So we can actually use the pandas library dot read CSV. And we'll pass the query URL to uh, load the data set. And I'll name this as DF. All right, so let's take a look. If I print the DF object, All right, so it's going to return a table with uh, these uh, columns return. And it's going to be retrieve data set. I want to do two things. I want to save data set as a CSV file. I also want to save the data set as a JSON file. All right, so I'll start with the uh, CSV file first. But here, let's go back to the top. I want to set the date column as my index. So I'll use the set index function. And I'll specify the column name, dates. And I want to replace the existing uh, DFM object. And to save the table as a CSV file, I can simply use the to CSV method followed by the uh, file name. And let's call this file Bitcoin uh, historical data dot CSV. In form to save the table as a JSON file, it uh, requires one more extra step. So we're going to insert context manager, we open. And for the file name, I'm actually going to use btc-usd.json as the file name. And it's going to be rymo. And I'll name the context manager f. All right, so I want to type f.write. And I want to use the json module.dumps. Then I'm going to insert the DFM object. So here we need to transpose the data set first. So it's going to be .t. T stands for transpose. They want to convert the uh, data set to a dictionary. And when I save the JSON file, I want to set the indention to uh, four spaces. So it's going to be indent, it goes to four. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to run the script. And the script finishes in 0.9 seconds. And here's the uh, JSON file. So let me open the JSON file first. And it's what the uh, records looks like. So here we have the first record with the record key being the uh, dates. And if we open the CSV file, and we should have the exact same table as the uh, Yahoo Finance historical data table. All right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to show you in this video. And hopefully you guys found this video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.